This is a Wild Game Production Podcast. You remember. Roll your stealth roll. Game books, pencils, pizza, cheese puffs, and a hell of a lot of dice. And the dragon woke up. Roll for initiative. This is the Roll for Initiative podcast, where 1E is the place to be. We're back for another issue of the Roll for Initiative podcast. We're at volume 6, uh, 193 we're at. I'm Vince sitting alongside Nick. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and Matt. Hello, everyone. And the great Crispy. Hello. Wow, what an intro. You know what? I, I can't do anything right. <clears throat> I was just thinking I was gonna be like, oh, you know, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna just say a normal hello. Vince won't have any ammo. But no, he just finds a way. I'm sick of your sick of your Crispy, Vince. Crispy, Crispy, do you have to rant on the show? Yes. You know, we here at HR would like to say that everyone can do something right. Uh yes, and sitting in with this week due to very uh various reasons from complaints, we have someone from our HR department, Melanie. Abusive reasons. Yeah, abusive reasons, whatever. Anyway, so, um, Nick, do we have any stars this week? I'm afraid. You're afraid of stars? No, we don't have any news. No, I'm just kind of afraid that HR is here. Um, But no, we don't have any new stars. Okay. Well, happens. I mean, Nick, I don't know why you should be afraid. It's not like a lot of the complaints mentioned someone named Nick by name. <laughs> just not a lot. No, not definitely not the majority of them. Anyway, so oh, we'll, <laughs> we'll be good and we'll, we'll have a presence on the show to keep us in line and on track as per executive orders. Anyway, uh, so we're back with another review this week, so we'll be right back after this. Like D&D? Enjoy playing the original? or maybe a clone of one, then listen into the Save or Die Podcast Expert Edition as DM's James... I'm DM James. Vince... Hello, hello. Glenn... That is one sexy voice you got going there, James. And TM Eric... Hey, folks. I want to know why Tankar is TM. Review, analyze, and talk about all iterations of the one true game that they love. Rules discussions, reviews of modules and supplements, retro clone talk... All that on the Save or Die Podcast Expert Edition. You can find it on iTunes or at their website, saveordie.info. Typical of all the evil creatures in the world, I like to find one with table manners. What are you kidding me? I've spent years cultivating the worst table manners on the planet. Table manners. All right, everybody, and welcome to Table Manners here in... We're going to be covering the <laughs> Wilderness Survival Guide. How many of you remember this book? Uh, yeah. yeah I mean, not a whole lot of us, but... <laughs> well, I remember it sitting on my shelf a lot. Yeah. Mine's like almost like just came off the press. I have a it's, little it's, bit of wear into mine. Use, but, you know, we're going to review it. I got a little wear. Yeah, yeah. from like moving it around. Yeah, for moving it from house to house, things like that. Some other one. books rubbing up against it as you took it yeah, off the too. shelf. I'm sorry, but Kim right, Mohan, right. this book was boring. <laughs> this book was w- written yes, by a war, you can boring. tell a war gamer. This is yeah, like this war is game like... rules. Which, if you're looking for a great simulation, this is... it's awesome if you want simulation. And enjoy your 50-hour yeah, games of yeah, Advanced Third Reich. Right. Well, you know, this game came out, what, 86? I uh, This book came out 86, I believe. Yeah, the late 86. And, uh, you know, people say that Earth, Earth Arcana was kind of like the death knell of first edition of going into 1.5. I think when this book showed up, plus maybe the Dungeoneer Survival Guide, you were really seeing the twilight years of first edition. Yeah, yeah. this book is You're, real second now edition. Just... Uh, was the rule cyclopedia out when this yeah. was this well, is no, like a, no, this is pre rules. No, I don't believe it. So. Mm, I think it might have been earlier than that. Uh, no, the I, rule cyclopedia but, uh, was here. Let me pull this up here because I actually have 
I'm on oh, ACM. Yeah. Here's our research. Here our archivist. Yeah. Yep, 91. Ah. Yeah. yeah Albeit, so you're wrong. you could buy the Wilderness Survival Guide. You weren't even born yet. Yeah, it was. I was, I was three years old. In, in 1990, oh, okay. you could get the Wilderness Survival Guide at Toys R Us in a nice bundle with that module. Because they had so many excess copies from the first printing, they started bundling it with a new module just to try to sell them off that and the Dungeoneer Survival Guide. Hmm. So. But like Nick was saying, that it's kind of the Twilight years. There's a lot of stuff in here that kind of rolled over into second edition, um, specifically like the non weapon proficiencies. Um, I remember like seeing a lot of those in, uh, in like the second edition player's handbook. So they ended up becoming core, but not until, you know, three years later. Yeah, for me, like the version that I come from, I recognize like the non-weapon proficiencies probably more than anything else. Yeah, like blind fighting was the one that stuck out the most. Yeah. Because I remember it was that Dark Elf. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's, um... Yeah, no, also the non-motion proficiencies I did not like in this, and I, I know quite a few DMs that actually did start using it towards the end, and might as well just switch over to second edition at that point. Yeah, I I liked them, but I also like second edition. Um, I, I like the option, I like that it's not so much what they did in like later editions like 3.5, where if you don't have this proficiency, you can't do this thing. A lot of it was just making you better at doing a particular task, like hunting. You know, mm-hmm. if you, if like in a later edition, if you don't have the hunting skill or survival skill or whatever, you just, you're, you essentially can't do that thing. Like you could try, but it's not going to be successful. With this, if you have hunting, you're just better at hunting. Like anyone well, can hunt because you live in a, you live in the 13th century. Yeah. In 5e, you can still make rolls for everything. Um, you just might not get. Uh, basically as much of a bonus to your role. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking more specifically 4th and 3rd. I don't speak about 4th edition. It doesn't exist. Nobody today. speaks about 4th edition anymore. I'd really rather like 4th edition. It's a great... Just so you know, I have the power of mute, right? <laughs> it's a great tabletop miniature skirmish game. That's about it. Yeah, it's, a, it's really fun. I don't know if it's necessarily a great role-playing game, but... It's a fun game. Yeah, I can shoot a lot of stuff with arrows and move around on the grid a whole bunch. Right. Yeah, if you were like, okay, you make five fifth level characters and you make five fifth level characters and we'll have them engage in battle, it's battle. great. It's great. Well, that sounds That's... really fun. Actually, I might do that next weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, sorry I, about might, that. I have a lot of practice in reading books that most people would consider incredibly boring, <laughs> considering my interests lie in things like economics and even for me this book was a little bit uh slow paced i definitely didn't read this cover to cover like i would have you know an unearthed arcana or um a module yeah i skimmed and just like all right here's the segment let's read the first few sentences the last few sentences all right there's the gist and a lot of it is stuff that i probably wouldn't all right all the time yeah. What the, about the, uh, if we're looking through the the table of contents here? The dressing for weather part, mm, I could see kind of using that depending on the type of campaign you're going yeah. to run. There are some interesting information you could pull out of there to use for your particular game. Maybe yeah, I you plan can... on using that in my campaign. Oh, great! You're welcome. <laughs> and um, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Crispy, would you use it in your game at all, you think? Or? Um, no, because, uh, you know, I'm, like, super lazy, and I hand wave everything. Oh, so, yes, you're like every other DM. Yeah, I was like, eh. The things that give players options, I would use, but the hard and fast, like, <laughs> table for percentages of personal heat level, I... I uh, I see that. Yeah. It's like my eyes glaze over and I get filled with an intense rage at nerds. It's too so much. Stuff. 
Yeah, it's too much stuff you have to take care of as a DM. You have enough stuff to worry about. You don't have to sit there and go, well, Crispy's character is uh, at 125 temperature, but he just farted in his armor, so now he's at uh, <laughs> There's one... a nice breeze <laughs> circulating. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm also like I I play by rule of cool. Like you know, if if you've got a a sh- a barbarian who is in the like the frozen tundra with the rest of the characters, like he's gonna be he's if he's just wearing a loincloth, he's fine. He's a barbarian. He's really tough. What you well, turned yeah. mad? <laughs> nah, I don't think so. Consistently. Okay. Consistently, yeah. So yeah, I mean. You can use it. You don't have to use it, but I wouldn't use it. No. The only way I could even see using it is if I was doing something very specific that it would actually add to and give the campaign more feel like it. Like, okay, you guys are going through for this specific portion of it, like a, a frozen Arctic tundra. Okay. Might add yeah, like a little a bit to it. Adventure. Right. But I would not use it the entire campaign. I'm not like, oh, it's 65 degrees outside. Let's figure out what everyone's body temperature is to right. see if you pass out from heat stroke. Not yeah, fun. The, uh, the extremes like the, you know, if you're in sub-zero weather or, you know, you're fighting on a on a volcano like a bridge over like a magma pit. Yeah. All right. Let's let's use these uh, these rules here. Um, but for just everyday adventuring. Eh, it's a little too much bookkeeping for my right. Case. I mean, if you do some, I like bookkeeping. Oh, so so you like fifth edition champions? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, see, my campaign takes place on a tropical island. Mm-hmm. So, so there are both. There's like a desert because of rain shadow from mountains, and there are also tropical forests that would be incredibly uncomfortable for someone in metal armor. Or, or what about that extra rust in the armor due to all the salt water mist blowing? Ooh, yeah. That was actually one portion of this book that I kind of liked was, like, the effects of water on armor. And just having the the percent chance or, like, the whatever, die roll chance of, like, your rusty sword breaks or your armor gets damaged. And I do like the, I don't know, like, there's a lot of stuff in here. I like the rules that are presented. I just wouldn't use them yeah and i th- and i think that sums this book up the rules are really well written well, they make sense yes. and they accomplish what they set out to do it's just would you ever actually use it because unless you made apps for everything and so you <laughs> could just punch in what is your internal body temperature and just have the drop down with all the equipment already there so you already ha- can calculate it all on the fly it just becomes a little too cumbersome to do at the table yeah well, I would, yeah. I would cherry pick the heck out of this book. Right. Well, there was like this one. What, Nick? Well, like there was this one table that actually kind of. <laughs> this is where the book for me just kind of like I, I cocked my hand. I'm like, really? Like, uh, there's this one table, table eight. Table eight on page. Uh... On page. It's um, page uh, 24. 24. Hailstone yeah. damage to characters. You look at that. T- you look at that table. Theoretically, a normal human being could die in uh, from being hit by small little hailstones. Technically, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, but I'm just looking at this. I'm like, really? <laughs> well, well, there's also the caveat uh, in this that, like, it does say that if you're pretty well protected, if you're wearing armor, you're not going to be affected by hail. But I mean, it's like just a normal human being just standing outside and it gets hit by a few hailstones. They theoretically could die just from little small ones. I would, yeah, I would only use this if it's like magical hailstones, like, you know, fantasy hail. This is like the thing, like, if you remember back in the day when they had car wars, theoretically, if two people were running at each other, they could kill each other. I hit. don't remember that, Nick, because uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm a baby child. Yeah. I know. That's okay. Nobody's oh. perfect. HR thinks everyone is perfect. Oh dear. Uh, There is a useful thing here and here, and it's definitely the um, starting with the encumbrance and movement. That is definitely something to use. A little too detailed, but I guess it could narrow some things down. I did not find a a reason why I need to know why an ape or a gorilla can hold 4,000 pounds, but... Well, you never know. I can think of plenty of reasons I need to know that. 
Name, name five one. right now. Yeah, now. Nine, yeah, yeah name yeah. five is correct. <laughs> five of them. Uh, I have at least five party members in my group. That's five. Means one ape can possibly run off with all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah, she's got us. Yeah. She's right. got us, yeah. She she's just there. King Konged us. <laughs> Yep, pretty much. I'm yeah. I'm now seeing the party trapped in like a pit or something, and then an ape just swings down, swoops them all up with one arm, and rescues them. Like <laughs> har- Harambe for the save. <laughs> <laughs> Bodyguard music going off in the background. I will always love you. <laughs> I want to say the Harambe meme phrase, but I can't. <laughs> Now, now, Crispy. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> out, out for Harambe. <laughs> now, uh, there was, uh, there's some sections that are useful. I mean, I think from Such time to time. Uh, I thought that they had the section on um, on magic on outside. There were some pretty uh, unique ways of using some uh, spells. Yeah, like, a, like I, Kona, like Kona Cold, for example. We're talking about magic in the wilderness now. Yeah, ma- magic in the wilderness. I mean, I thought that there were some things I thought was pretty cool there. So I like I, I, that's so I don't know. It seems so edge casey to me that I was just like, eh. But it's it's just really specific uses usages, which you know, it's cool to have like a good rule of thumb to adjudicate by, but I really liked, uh, man, where was it? Really? Let's see if I can find yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I really was digging the part on the natural disasters, your volcano eruptions, your tornadoes, earthquakes, because that's something I could see actually using, because again, it's a one-off yeah, thing. Yeah, I thought those were sections like how to screw out the player characters. <laughs> if you ever wanted to run your Joe versus the volcano themed campaign, this book is for you. Just get a bunch of orange soda, sit down and Ugh, orange soda. Yeah, the natives love it. Crispy, crispy. Vince, you have to be nice to me. I have I have a brain cloud. I didn't want to tell you guys like this, but Doctor says it's fatal. That's no excuse. So you got some good, interesting uh, stats here on moving waterborne vehicles around in the water, which I never really bothered with, I guess. Anybody use those in their game? No. 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 Naval combat no. just doesn't no, come never. up that much in mine. <laughs> yeah. That's... Now, I did see it was kind of cool with the flying mounts, with the dragons and the, how much they can carry as well, because that has come yeah, up in yeah. a bunch of my campaigns, and I didn't realize that was in here, so now I know again, you know, the book that I haven't cracked open in 20 something. Yeah, I agree like, on that one. Absolutely. I think that's the, the quintessential, I guess, like, like review point of this is there's good stuff in here. It's just buried. It's a good reference if you are doing something kind of outside of the ordinary in your game. Like, if you're going to have naval combat, um, you can. The problem with these books. They were written. They were written as references, not as yeah, like yeah. material that you can use or read. With um, I yeah, like yeah, the books, but just yeah, some of them yeah. written. Really These are bad. almost like Dragon Magazine articles, like the uh, optional rules from Dragon Magazine thrown together in like a codified book. Oh, so, well, so it's wasn't Arthur Kim Arthur. speaking about that? Wasn't Kim Mohan doing Dragon Magazine? And wasn't he the editor at that point? I believe so. Yeah, eighty six. He was editor. I thought. Yeah, he, yeah. We, we yeah. talked about this when we did the Unarthur Arcana episode. That did because I'd never heard who Kim Mohan was. No. Yeah. No. And you guys were like, oh, he he was uh, editor of Dragon. I was like, all right. All right I thought you did. did I did it. Wanted to grow on. Good job. Because you're just a bill on Capitol Hill. <laughs> uh, crispy? <laughs> hey, I didn't say the word. Yeah. I said. So, what else do we think, Nick? Um, there was a few other things I thought were kind of useful. I mean, maybe some of the stuff for uh, on food and water. 
uh, maybe for like when you have ranger characters, if they're out going like, if they're out going hunting, maybe some of that information would be useful there. I thought was pretty good. And uh, medicine and first aid, I thought it was a very good section if you, if you were playing a druid. Mm-hmm. You know, some of that stuff might be good there too. Maybe for clerics too. Yeah, I I love the non weapon proficiency um, portion of this, like but sprinting and uh, like long distance running. The rules for that were really cool to me. Like you can sprint for uh, you can sprint at five times your movement speed for x amount of turn or x amount of rounds, and then you can like long distance run for a full turn at one point five speed. Just that kind of thing. I was like, oh yeah, this is really easy and handy. When it gets too in depth, that's where I'm just like, eh, I don't know if I would ever use this. Got some good uh, hex graphs in the back too. You can mm-hmm. photocopy because you know back then you had to photocopy it because there was no internet to steal <laughs> yeah. it from. Yeah. yeah, there are a lot of really great like overland travel rules in this. If you want to do a hex crawl uh, kind of campaign, I think this is a a, a pretty invaluable book for that. Yeah. Actually, I realized the perfect campaign for this Oregon Trail. Huh. Oh man, I would definitely play the Oregon Trail. I would play that. Yes, if you do the Oregon Trail. You can actually just use this book for everything because it covers, yeah, yeah, it, covers all. it all. It's got your hunting. It's yeah. got your fishing. It's got pro- probably has rules for fjording your wagon across the river. It definitely yeah. has rules for floods and flash floods and avalanches and rock. Does it have Through rules for Rockies. dysentery, though? Because <laughs> really, the rules for dysentery are all rock that. Rock climbing. I think the rules in dysentery are in the DMG. Yeah, there, there like actually disease. is a disease section in the DMG. So there's your dysentery rules. Oregon Trail yep, campaign. Absolutely. Yeah, Oregon Trail it I, is. Yeah, fatigue and exhaustion uh, is a whole segment. And then, you know, missile combat from a mount if you want to do, like, mounted archery. I kind of feel like the starting from scratch area was something like a filler. I only skimmed that from what I... The gist that I got from it... I'm sorry, yeah. listeners, that I didn't yeah. do extensive research here, but uh, it's like building a world from scratch... Yeah, kind of making it make sense. It like this is this part seems yeah, like it's a, it's a world bit. Yeah, it's a world building section. Yeah, it's what Matt said. Kind of like dragon articles stuck together here at this point. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, then you get your random charts for determining weather. Um, if you don't let, if you want to know what the weather is, at which point, considering in Cincinnati we've experienced all four seasons, I can only imagine what they've been <laughs> rolling for our weather here. I have, I, a, I have a die that does that for me. It's just like a six-sided die. Now, I did like that they blacked out the edges for the index, <laughs> or the appendix, I should say, uh, so you can easily find what, where it starts. I did like that on my book. Oh, I don't have a, I have a digital copy. That's you, good to know, uh, to know, though. Yeah, it, like the very tips of the pages have like a black mark down the side, so if you're holding the okay. book... You can actually see. Oh, it's like, oh, that's where it starts. Instead of like, oh, where does it start? Let me look at the front of the book. Right. Yeah. And then the table of contents to get the index. Yep. And then so I can see where other things are. Yep. And it has the appendix. Look of, up how to look up things. Right. Yeah, and it has the appendix of all the charts uh, yeah. in the back. Just every chart in the book is just at the very back, so you don't have to flip to the individual page numbers mm-hmm. if you know what chart you need. So that's. I also like that the, the table of contents has the the tables listed there, so you can kind of go like, "Oh, I need to know what the encumbered limits are for animals. How much can this horse carry?" And you just go to page thirty-two. It's a nice touch. So, what would we rate this book as for usefulness? Crispy, we'll start with you. I'd say three point seven five. Three point seven five. Yeah, not quite three and a half, but not quite four. Uh, I think it's a good book to have as a reference, but you know, I would like, I would love to have this just around if I want to do something interesting when I'm prepping. Um, but you know, I don't, I don't think it's. Ah, I'll give it a four. I'll give it a four. I think it's a good really? book. Really, really. Yeah, I, I think it's well written. I like the information in here. Is it always useful? No, but like I said, it's it would be something I would want to have on the shelf. Wow! All right, Nick, what about you? We usually go by uh, up up to five swords. Yeah, five swords. I give it two and a half. Hmm. Oh, okay. I give it two and a half swords. I mean, yeah, there are some useful things in here, but there are some things like 
yeah, I don't know if a human being's going to be killed by like a normal small little pellet of hailstones. And I don't need Just to be told that one. <laughs> and, stuck on that. I don't. I don't need to be told the difference between a desert and a forest. I think uh, I know what the differences are. The forest has for green mana. The desert. <laughs> the no, desert pings game. attacking creatures for one. Yes. Yeah. Stop. Just stop. Hey, you pay <laughs> one generic, tap it, do one damage to target creature. Watch it. I'll sick HR on you. It's also on the reserved list, so therefore it'll never be reprinted. <laughs> yeah, the desert and tundra and uh, volcanic well, islands. This, well, there was also this thing at the very beginning, like the very, like the very first page. I thought was somewhat uh, pretentious of them when they said, and I quote. Everyone involved in the game will have to keep close track of time. No longer can a one-day journey be summed up by simply saying, a day has passed and you are now here. Yeah. Is I'll be the judge. Part? Yeah, that's like at the very beginning. It was like, no longer can you just say, oh, you made it to the next town and crap like that. Like, really? So I'll an, be the judge of that. Yeah. So it's like space travel and traveler. <laughs> <laughs> You, where yeah. you have to roll, roll out everything. You can't just hand wave jumps. You have to roll it out because... Yeah, but also Traveler is a game where... Yeah, but also Traveler and Character die. What? Uh, apparently, Apparently, Nick's internet connection died during right. the, the speaking there. It sounded like he just like went into the future and then came back to the past or something. <laughs> that sense. Oh, no, he's in a time loop. <laughs> that was really weird. Yeah. Uh, so I would rate this book a two. Uh, it has some useful information in it, but not enough that I would actually use it. And people know I don't like skills in my first edition game. So, yeah, uh, Matt? I'm going to three. It has those edge cases that I might actually use one day. Never know when an earthquake, volcano, uh, what was that one bad movie like Earth twenty twenty or something or end of I don't know, one of those like twenty twelve twenty twelve yes oh yeah there you go you when you have a twenty twelve type oh, situation where you have volcanoes tornadoes and earthquakes all simultaneously and the rules <laughs> here dogs and cats living together exactly if you're doing your end of times you need, times, you need the book but the rules for any one of those things they're well written they make sense but again it's more it, it seems like it's a dragon magazine compilation of interesting things that you probably won't use but you might use one or two so i'll go three it's worth having to pull off the shelf when you do need it but you're probably not going to need it all that often you don't need more than one copy that's, that's definitely oh no true. no 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 more yeah. I saw someone on Facebook had like six copies on their shelf, and well, they posted the picture. I was like, "Dude, you don't need six copies no. of that book." Like, why? why? There's <laughs> only one print run of this book, too. It, no, yeah, I can say I would say two: one for a copy to read, one for collect purposes, right. and one to read on the crap. The only that, that's the, three. The only reason I can see having multiples is if you still have the one that came with the module and the shrink, because oh, that's yeah, actually that, worth a little bit of money. The Wild Things bundle. Yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Bubbled it with a module or something. Right. Like yeah. In 1990, four years later, they still had a stockpile of these books, and in order to move them, they threw in a new module to get you to so buy the module Isn't and get a hardback shot. book with you. <laughs> oh, that's right. Wasn't that during that like buy this for ten something, get this? Yeah, yeah I remember um, we talked about that. No, that, here's that, my question. This is the one you'd get at like uh, KB Toys or Toys R Us. Yeah. Oh. I used to work at a KB Toys. Oh, man, that takes me back. Yeah. Um, so, so here's my question. Like, could you use this as a replacement for Outdoor Survival by Avalon Hill? Not familiar with it. Uh, it's the, the board game. Like, if you wanted to have, yeah. Like, it was uh, the secondary key component to be able to play original D&D. Because like, if had... you want to play this game, also have a copy of this game. Right. Oh, wow. Well, the whole but reason they did that is because of the map. Of the outdoor okay. map was gr – the uh, Hex alt outdoor map for that game is great. It has like four different boards you, that are all interchangeable, so you okay. can link them together because I actually own a copy of the game. Yeah, I've never seen a copy of it. I, you can't find a digital copy of it to like even read through and be like, what What do they mean? Why do I need this thing? Yeah. It, 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 they, they sold – it wasn't for the rules of the game. It was for the okay. maps. Ah. The maps are great overland Hex maps. 
So that's a thing that I've been wondering about for f- like 15 years. Thanks. <gasps> Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Well, I collect old Avalon Hill stuff. I got like 50. Oh, yeah, that's right. You do. So yeah, I, yeah, right. I collect I, everything. I, I do collect a lot. I'm not a hoarder. Yeah. I'm a collector. Mm-hmm. No, you're mm-hmm. next on hoarders. We'll see you on the show. Next on hoarders, this guy named Matt likes to collect Avalon Hill. Yeah, I probably have like fifty some Avalon Hill games. I mean, that's all. In a world where Matt collects, oh, never mind. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, I'm just broke into the movie guy voice. In a world where Matt collects Avalon Hill things. One man, fifty <laughs> board games, yeah. one TV show about people who obsessively collect things, and twenty four hours until his death. And wow. 12 single ladies. What? <laughs> Turned into a reality show. <laughs> yeah. One yes, grand prize of $25,000. Wow. Oh, what a prize. Yeah. Grand prize should be like five grand or something. So it's just really lame. And seven taco wrappers. All right. And uh, wrap things up. Melanie, what's your kind of sword review for this book and usefulness? I mean, I would give it four swords. There, There's a lot of stuff in here that I actually like. Um, I guess with 5e, it simplifies a lot of things. So, like, I wouldn't have to worry about the skill proficiencies and the weapon proficiencies and a lot of this. Mm-hmm. But the idea of, like, how, what's the chance of you finding food or water or, like, how overheated are you in this plate armor in the middle of a desert is, or like, if you'll be killed me. by hailstones. Yeah. Like, are you about to get <laughs> killed by a golf ball sized hailstone? Like, the answer is probably yes. <laughs> so, but no, I, I like it. The hailstone thing just reminds me of uh, in 3.5, the theory crafters were just like, uh, 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 a house cat will kill uh, a first level commoner reliably 75% of the time. You know, it's because cats you are know, mean. Have you met them? Well, I can't smother me. So what I, I, is what is the average that we got for the review here? Probably three. Hmm. It's in the threes. In the threes. Okay. I mean, we could do the math. Uh, no, I'm not doing uh, anything. No, this uh, book had enough math devil. in it already. Yeah, I'm yeah. already. I'm already well, brain fried. Am, am, I always I thought also going through this book, a lot of it was kind of like filler. That's what, yeah, that's what we were saying. Kind of felt like yeah, Dragon yeah. Magazine articles strung yeah. together, and they kind of. Was this if you look at, if you look at the second book in the series, you know they could have like made them into one, really. What you mean, the Dungeoneer Survival Guide? Yeah, wasn't Dungeoneer out before Wilderness? Because it references Dungeoneers yes. in it. So. It was oh, okay. Dungeoneers was out first, then Wilderness. I don't know. Which I thought, I thought well. I think is a little more useful than Dungeoneer's one. Yeah, that is a lot more useful than this. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I think that's going to wrap things up for this week, and uh, we'll be back with another show in the following weeks. Uh, so we'll say keep it original, keep it old school. Good night, everybody. Bye, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Are you enjoying the show you're listening to right now? Want to help support the show? Why not head over to the Patreon site, patreon.com slash WGP. That's patreon.com slash WGP. And help support the network for as little as $1.50 a month. That's right, $1.50 a month goes a long way. Thank you.